So now we are going to see what are the enabling technologies for that type of isolation. So that is nothing but virtualization technology. So if you guys haven't heard about this, the concept is this. Suppose now this is a one particular physical server. So in the physical server, you have processors, you have memory, graphics, network, storage, everything, right? So on top of this hardware, you have operating system running, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. So on top of that, you have your application. You have Safari, word processing application, Excel, Skype, and all those different applications are running on top of your operating system. But for your server, you can have only one particular operating system. It could be either Mac, it could be either Linux or Windows. If you want to have multiple operating systems and distribute these resources among those multiple operating system in a shared manner, so you have to use a virtualization layer on top of your physical hardware. Look at the right side. So you have your physical hardware and on top of that you have virtualization layer. It could be hypervisor or different layer of uh, virtualization. So virtualization layer is nothing but a new software. Now there are different softwares that provide this virtualization server. For example, you can have VirtualBox. Now this is an open source virtualization software or you can have VMware Workstation or you can have Sen. Now this is the virtualization software that AWS uses. So I put three stars there and there are other virtualization uh, softwares as well. So AWS uses this particular AWS Sen. So when you have virtualization layer on top of your physical hardware, it will allow you to run multiple operating system. Now look at this bar. So you have one operating system here. So let's say this is Linux and you can spin up another virtual machine on top of that and have a different operating system in there. So when you create a virtual machines on top of this virtualization layer, it will create virtual hardware inside that virtual machine. So this is the physical hardware. So you have processors, memory, graphics, networking. So similarly, you will have virtualized processors, memory, graphics, network, storage, etc. So the guest operating system will think it has its own physical hardware, but actually these are virtual hardware. So this operating system, let's say this is Linux, so it will also think, okay, I have my own hardware, so I will run my operating system on top of that, but still they have virtualized hardware. So virtualization software, it will isolate all these aspects, not just the CPU, not just the memory, but networking and all other aspects, they will virtualize it and you can simply control how much resources to be allocated among these virtual machines very easily. So this is the core technology that made the cloud computing possible. Let's say AWS has a massive data centers around the world. So they have servers in there and they have this virtualization technology, send virtualization software installed in those servers. So let's say you and I, sign up for an AWS account and spin up a new EC2 machine. So what they will do is they will create a small EC2 virtual machine on top of one of their servers and give it to us. So depending upon the resources that we choose, how much memory, how much hard disk that we provision, it will create a small virtual machine in one of their servers and give it to us. So simple as that. So that's about virtualization technologies. Now in cloud, there are three types of cloud computing. Let me walk you guys through them. First one is called infrastructure as a service. Of a short, we call it IaaS. So what does infrastructure as a service mean? So let's take the same scenario. You have your e-commerce website and you want to deploy it onto the AWS. So you tell AWS, AWS, give me a server or a virtual machine with 500 GB hard disk and 1 GB RAM and this many cores of CPUs, right? So you are only asking your server with the physical or virtual hardware, right? 
and AWS will provision a virtual machine using the virtualization technologies and give you a virtual machine with this amount of hardware and this amount of RAM and this amount of CPU. So afterwards, it's up to you to install the operating system. It could be Linux, Mac, Windows, and then install your application servers. For example, if your application is an ODS application, you have to install Node, and you have to install Express, and all the necessary software to run your application. Not only that, but also the database server. If it is MySQL or SQL Server or Oracle, so those database servers also you have to install. So it's your full responsibility to install all these servers and finally get your website up and running on them. So you have the full control over your virtual machine or the physical server. So that is called infrastructure as service. Now the downside of that is even though you have the full control, there will be a lot of administration stuff for you to do. You have to patch your operating system. If the operating system gets a new security update, you have to make sure the server is updated. If your antivirus get a new update, you have to make sure that is up and running and it is updated. But that's a choice. And the next type of cloud computing is called platform as a service or in short we call PaaS. Now let's take the same scenario. You want to host your e-commerce website, but instead of asking a server from AWS with physical or virtual hardware, you will say AWS give me a virtual machine with Linux and MySQL databases installed. So there AWS will provision a machine, install Linux operating system and install MySQL database and give it to you. So then what is left for you is to define your database schemas and create the tables or collection if it is no SQL. Afterwards, you have to upload your website code and your application will be up and running. In AWS, Elastic Beanstalk is a popular platform as service. And in Azure, you have Azure App Services where you can host web apps, mobile apps or API apps. So in platform as a service, you don't have to worry about patching your operating system with new security updates, managing licenses of your databases. So those administration stuff will be handled by platform by itself, right? So that's an advantage there. So it's quite less administration compared to infrastructure as a service type. Finally, we have SaaS or software as a service. In software as a service, you have zero administration. You don't have to well, ask for a new server, so upload your website code or create your database schema or do anything else. You don't have to do any of that. Now let's take example. Think about Google Docs, which I'm right now using for this presentation. So if I wanted to use Google Docs, it's just a matter of creating a Google account and logging into Google Docs and go to Google Slides and they will give me a full PowerPoint software for me to create these slides without me having to provision any resources, do anything else, right? It's just a matter of subscribing or signing up for a Google account. Then the applications are available for me to use. So that is software as a service. So those are the three types of cloud computing, guys. So if you compare IAS, PaaS, and software as a service like this, from infrastructure as a service to SaaS, there will be less administration. On the other hand, from SaaS to IAS, there will be more control. Right? So it's a, it's a choice, and it's depending upon your situation. You can choose IAS, PaaS, or SaaS. All right, guys, I think that's it I want to cover in this episode. So we discussed about what cloud computing is as per the definitions and we took an analogy and we talked about different characteristics about cloud computing, scaling up and scaling out. And then we talked about how it was handled before cloud computing and we looked at cloud computing enabling technologies like virtualization. And finally, we talked about these three types of cloud computing. So I think that's what I want to share with you in this episode. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.